And and that's my my FOMO or you know positivity on. I I understand that we could go sideways for eight years, but I'm I'm crossing my fingers, and I mean I don't like to wish, um, but. I, I feel think, we're going to look back and be like, okay, we missed out on the Amazons and the Netflix. And, and I hope that we look at these charts in terms of Bitcoin and the crypto and uh, th these apps that will be coming out and investors come in and they kind of invest blindly, I hope, going like, well, clearly that worked there. We got this going on here, but we don't fully understand it, but let's get into it and see what fucking happens. I think, you know, you're going to have a lot of that. You're going to have people that just, I mean, it happens every bull market. Every time we have, like, if we go into a super cycle, people will be throwing their money at anything. Um, it's just human behavior. If we go into that super cycle, are you 100% in Bitcoin and stay away? Maybe Ethereum, but stay away from everything else? I think I'm going to work on uh, accumulating a very healthy non-KYC position of bitcoin and um and we'll leave it at that honestly i yeah. don't know i don't know every cycle is a little bit different i think uh it would be foolish for me to say that i won't dabble in other things uh, i'm not a bitcoin maximalist i do see the value of uh you know all of these companies and these these organizations these DAOs, all trying different things and i think that we see an a pretty impressive next wave forwards once we have kind of the framework of blockchain really solidified, I think that's just where the stock market will be. So if you invest in stocks, yeah. you'll be, you know, inadvertently buying cryptos because there will be tokenized shares of stocks. So I think we see, you know, tokenized securities. I think we see different, uh, different types of companies, decentralized autonomous uh, organizations, DAOs, decentralized autonomous companies, DACs. And then, uh, you know, STOs, tokenized securities. Um, we're going to have just a completely new stock market. Yeah, well, I think FTX just bought Robinhood. I mean, this is that the beginning of that. You're bringing in the stock market onto these crypto exchanges. Yeah. Because, I'm, and I hope, hopefully that could go DeFi as well, but let's see. I think it will. We'll have the, the New York Stock Exchange available 24 hours a day and accepting any currency and potentially even loopholes to do without KYC. 24 hours a day. Yeah, and I, I believe that's better for human uh, civilization and the growth. It's just going to allow us to grow, you know, exponentially faster than what we're doing today. Uh, back to that point of your company A and company B, we can move money much quicker. Therefore, things can happen much faster. And we're just reducing friction at the end of the day. It's, it's no different than if I was at, you know, you had the horse and buggy and I had to get across from, you know, New York to California, well, we came out with a car and we reduced that friction of time. Yeah. And that's how human civilization advances. You need to reduce friction with technology. Exactly. Or using the example of Phuket, for those who don't know, Phuket is an island. It, uh, once upon a time, it didn't have a bridge. Yeah. So like when you advance the technology and you create connections with other countries, you're able to build way faster. So as soon as the bridge was made from mainland Thailand to Phuket, boom, Phuket booms it, it, yeah. it grows exponentially and the same thing's going to happen with blockchain technology we're just reducing all of the friction so that we can get shit done yeah, yeah it's coming so everyone uh, don't be so bearish just uh, if anything like you said i don't eight years i mean i'll be 44 i think it'll be uh, four, i'm good with four can we settle there <laughs> <laughs> and i think you know there will be bull markets yeah it, uh, like the accumulation range of the last cycle like i said it was between three thousand and fourteen thousand dollars there was really good money making opportunities inside of those rallies i don't think anything's going to change i think we're going to have ebbs and flows and when you are sitting on this side of of a potential 10 year eight year thing it's it's very daunting to look that far forwards but if you take it one year at a time you know It'll be no time at all before we've had the lowest price in Bitcoin and we're starting to, you know, come up from that. It might be two years from now. It might be, you know, the end of 2023 where the, the low of Bitcoin comes in and then we're up, up only <laughs> for like 12 years. Yeah, um, it's, it's hard. I, I've been thinking about strategies and I mean, I, I understand how to swing trade. I, I'm pretty comfortable on that. I use pretty basic indicators. I'll use a bit of FIB, but. I prefer the RSI or stock RSI, maybe some MACD, but mostly RSI. It's it's enough for me to kind of pick my position depending on uh, whether it's a long hold or short hold and what time frame I'm dealing with. 
However, what does scare me is you, you come, Bitcoin is so volatile that you can create this, okay, these are my long-term Bitcoins. This is what I'm going to try to, you know, create um, capital with that I can use as spending cash over the next couple of years. But Bitcoin is so scary that when it hits that all-time high, maybe your short-term and long-term strategy, you just sell it all because you panic. So I'm, I'm not quite sure. I'm trying to map that out and plan that out.